a story or an account is given in Genesis chapter 2 verses 9 the Bible says the Lord God made to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and I want you to note that underline that because I'm going to come back to that later he made every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food not those two every tree that is pleasant for sight are you following and is good for food the tree of life also was in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil there were two trees that are identified distinctly because of what God wants to reveal here and the next verse tells us a river went out of Eden and the water of uh, the water uh, a river went out of Eden to the to water the garden and from hence it was parted and it became into four heads now fast forward God instructs man to eat of every tree which was pleasant to the eyes and good for food remember except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you remember the story many of you the serpent comes and tempts eve and adam and tells them god does know as he said that you shall not eat of every tree of the garden He said no he told us to eat of every tree of the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and what evil he was trying to test how much they were man knew and then the story tells us that the serpent tells Adam and Eve God knows that the day you eat of the knowledge of, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall be like God able to know what is evil and what is good praise the lord the bible tells us thank you chapter verses 5 for god knows that in the day you shall eat thereof then your eyes shall be open and you shall be as god's knowing good and evil next verse verse 6 and when the woman saw listen that the tree was good for food number one and it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree to be desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and give unto, or unto her husband also and he what he ate now i want us to remember in the beginning he made every tree one pleasant for food and good no pleasant for the eyes and good for food you remember the beginning when i read for you in genesis 2 9 every tree in the garden number one was pleasant to the to the sight and it was good for food the only difference with this tree of the knowledge of good and evil the woman saw that the tree was good for food like every other tree in the garden it was pleasant to the eyes like every other tree in the garden but this one had a unique feature that no tree had in light to what the serpent had told her. Able to make one wise. So it's, it's as though Satan is telling Adam and Eve that every other tree is good for food. It's pleasant to the eyes. But this one is distinct. It makes one wise. And then Adam and Eve did what? eat thereof and immediately the bible says the eyes of both were open like satan had promised they didn't become blind read your bible the eyes of both were what open and they knew satan said god does know that the day you eat of this tree your eyes will open and you shall be able you shall be like god able to know both good and what evil it's true the eyes of both were open comma and they knew 
underline those two words open and they knew but in this instance that they were naked they were naked and then God knows they struggle you know what he does he comes for them he comes for them and what do they expect from a God who told them not to break this law they expect that they're in trouble so what happens they hide themselves and God comes out asking Adam Adam where are you I had your voice he said and I hid myself he asked him did you who told you that you are naked did you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil Adam now is the fall of man and then the consequent punishment that was to follow because of what had happened now we all or I believe many of you in this room know that we function in two worlds you have a physical world this material world where you see and understand things and then we have a spiritual world the world where you don't many of us are not able to see or understand but we affirm even through scripture that it exists some of us are able to understand it you understand it through the dream, kinds of dreams you have i have people in this room perhaps who have dreamt something and it has come to pass that did not come from a material world some of you have had intuitions some of you have had impressions on your spirit of things that have really appeared you've thought about somebody and then they walked into the room you thought about something and then it took place you are synchronized to a world that you might not fully understand how it works but you know that it exists do you agree that world the bible says by faith we know that the worlds were framed by the word of god so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear the things which are seen hebrews 11 3 were not made of things which do appear that means everything you see in the physical realm was made by something or things that are not visible in the realm of the spirit in the, in, in the physical realm you get it god is spirit you cannot see him physically but when he said let there be the world was formed isn't it everything we see has a representation in the other realm everything you see there was a version of you before you were formed in your mother's womb he said before I knew you he told Isaiah I before you were formed in your mother's womb I knew you and I called you to be a what a prophet unto nations before you were formed there was a spiritual version of yourself are you following what I'm saying and that spiritual version manifested into the physical version which you are but in that spiritual version that is where God knew you in that spiritual version that is where God sanctified you in that spiritual version that's where God ordained you and called you to be a prophet in every nation so your sanctification took place in a world you don't know you have you, that is not physical your ordination or the, the anointing on your life came before you came in your mother's womb the sanctific the the the, the 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 calling on your life came before you were formed in your mother's womb that is why god is against abortion oh i hope you know i don't feel offending Yeah, I don't feel offending as long as I'm preaching the truth. Now, you, you might have an opinion. I'm not giving my opinion. I'm giving the opinion of the Bible. Because imagine killing what God has anointed, what God has sanctified, and what God has called. You follow? Now, back to, to what I'm trying to tell us here. When he created man, in his own image and likeness before man fell there are things Adam and Eve did not know but yet in the 
place of that obscurity that ambiguity that ignorance in which they come then was their perfection they were perfect because they did not know certain things and being opened into a world to know certain things then led to their fall and as amazing as can be in the most perfect sense or essence God has created man there are things man was not created to know these are things theologically we call forbidden wisdoms forbidden wisdoms because one they are not from God they are not by God they were not made to be known the Bible has at least 13 extra biblical texts and one of which is the book of Enoch if some of you have read about it or read it if you haven't that's okay book of Jeshur and many other things many others which even the Bibles give um, reference to if you read your Bible you'll find reference from the book of Jeshur if you read your Bible you'll find references from the book of Enoch for example when Peter explains of the angels that were held in prison waiting for the day of judgment when you read your bible you cannot find it anywhere except in the book of enoch and it explains why these angels are held in what in captivity they taught man forbidden wisdoms some forbidden wisdoms for example they taught men how to make weapons it's forbidden wisdom you understand now they are fallen angelics that are still teaching these things by inspiration and I don't want you to take this for granted because remember Satan fell with one third of the angels and these are the angels that are our key they are principalities and under them are spirits powers dominions rulers I mean uh, powers and rulers and spirits of wickedness in high places that's how you know the, the demonic world ranks but follow me very keenly for example, how does a guy sit in a lab and make a nuclear weapon? That is not wisdom a man is supposed to have. Are you following what I'm saying? That's not wisdom a man is supposed to have. There are things that are not for you. How, how do you make, who taught a man how to make poison? How does a man make poison? And there are poisons that are tasteless they are put on a plate and then once heat comes on them and a man eats from that plate even though the poison is dry gets into that man's system and starts killing or shutting his organs until that man dies a couple of weeks later how does a man sit in a lab and think that that's not inspired of God it's forbidden what wisdom but not all forbidden wisdoms are directly uh, negative in their own way and, and nature. In fact, when you study forbidden wisdoms, you realize that there were even angels that were taught, uh, that taught men how to make antidotes or cures for these poisons. And it was part of forbidden wisdom. So he creates the problem and then creates the what? The solution. You understand what I'm saying? There are things that you were not meant to know. That you had to be fallen to know. There are things you were not meant to know. Let's go a bit deeper. You've heard of things like tarot card reading. You know. You know things like clairvoyance. Where people have abilities to see accurately in the spirit realm but not by the holy spirit you've heard of things like horoscopes reading your star of course all of us by the spirit are stars by the way it's biblical that we are stars we're luminaries he told abraham that your descendants shall be as the stars you see when jesus was born a star appeared in what yes in heaven in fact devil worshippers would tell you that if if they want to you know send witchcraft on people they would arrest their stars spiritually 
the bible says in judges that the stars fought in their courses men fought as stars in the spirit and sisera was killed so yes there is a spiritual connotation to this but how do you wake up in the morning and read your horoscope who are you i'm a sagittarius who are you i'm a leo i'm a Virgo. now this thing speaks into your days ahead and some of you many of these things are accurate but being accurate does not mean that they're true so how do they read stars how do they tempt the world to agree with whatever they've said according to your life to find later that what you read in a horoscope then is what is happening in your personal life did god design your life to be led and defined by horoscopes some of you don't know the difference and i'm here to help you that there are wisdoms we were not meant to know there are many things that are not given for man to know that if they should then it has to be another voice speaking to this person or speaking through this person now we have things like familiar spirits spirits of divination when you go to the book of acts there's a young girl the bible says that she had a spirit of divination apollos and she brought her master's much gain through soothsaying this girl would see in the spirit her eyes were open and then the apostles of god are passing and then she says behold the servants of god who have come to bring salvation was she speaking truth yes but not from the spirit of god this was a familiar spirit trying to lure these men to agree with her because she was affirming their assignment she was affirming their assignment today in the body of christ by the way you, you, this this side of the world you don't see it much when you come to africa you'll see we we have people who are not functioning under you know prophetic true prophetic they're functioning under familiar spirits there's a there's a there's a there are spirits called familiar family they are acquainted with your life they especially people who don't know god if somebody's not born again many a time these things follow you they are familiar with you so they saw how you ate what you did they were with you all through they were like watchers you know following so somebody leaves the earth and when they leave the earth okay i hope you're not scared right no come on irish people are when i was coming into your airport i saw this thing called a giant spirit spirit of what giant spirit yeah so you're big inside so you can take this now <laughs> now this girl had a a what a familiar spirit and one of the characteristics of familiar spirit is they follow you that is why the bible says the same followed paul and us saying they love following they they go around you okay so they study lives they know your life and stuff so when you die or if you die if you know if, 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 if you, you have not tamed that world because there's a way to close that out by the way the wisdom of god has taught that but if you don't if you don't tame that world you know some people uh leave familiar spirits and so uh you've heard of people who talk to the dead you've heard of mediums some of you watch them some are from hollywood and everywhere you know seances speaking to the dead and those kinds of things yet your bible tells you that the dead have no business with the living so if the dead have no business with the living no man who is gone is supposed to return in any form you agree but let me give us a story there's something i'm trying to build here let me give us a story we have a king called saul who has walked out of purpose and he has lost his way and the bible tells us that one day the philistines came against him first samuel chapter 28 now king saul had been chosen by the people because they wanted the king god wanted to raise himself a king but they said no we want our own god had promised in prophecy that he would raise himself a man but they said no we want our own king and so god gave them who Saul. Saul went off the way of God and it came to pass in 1 Samuel 28 in those days the Philistine gathered their armies together for warfare to fight with who? With Israel. When Saul was what? King. Are you following? Now, and Ashish said unto uh, David, knowest, sorry, know thou assuredly that thou shalt go out with me to battle and thy men. 
Now, let me skip to verses 3. Now, at that particular point, Samuel was what? Was dead. David was, an, um, uh, uh, was among the armies of Saul. Samuel was dead and all Israel had lamented him and buried him in what? In Ramah, even his own city. Now Saul put away those that had familiar spirits. Remember? He, when Sam, Saul dies, this, no sorry, Samuel dies in Ramah, Saul gets everybody which has a familiar spirit and burns them and say, we don't want anybody with a familiar spirit walking in Israel. And the wizards out of the land. And the Philistines gathered themselves together and came and pitched in Shunem. And Saul gathered all Israel together and they pitched at Bilbo. When Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was what? Are you following me? He was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then Saul said unto the servants, seek me a woman that has a what? Familiar spirit. I failed to hear God. Let's go to a woman who has a what? Who has a familiar spirit. They looked for one and they found a woman with a familiar spirit at Endor. That's what verse 7 tells you. They hold, they, behold, there was a woman that had a familiar spirit at what? At Endor. So they told, they told so, go to this woman. So he disguises himself, you know, hides under something and then goes to this woman and says, divine unto me by the familiar spirit. And bring him up whom I shall name unto thee. Verses 8. The woman said unto him. Behold you know what Saul has done. He has cut off those that have familiar spirits. And the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then why do you lay such a snare on my life. To cause me to die. Saul burned us. Okay. And then Saul swore by her. As the Lord liveth. There shall be no punishment to happen unto thee. And then the woman. Whom shall. Then the woman said. Whom shall I bring unto thee. And then he said. Bring me up who. Samuel bring me up the spirit of Samuel I want to hear what God is what and when the woman saw Samuel she cried with a loud voice and the woman spake unto Saul saying why have you deceived me you must be so the Bible says she saw Samuel she saw Samuel coming out of the dead so ultimately the question is this fellow she saw was it Samuel or a familiar spirit. Some say so Samuel, some say familiar spirit. Which is which? Was it Samuel or a familiar spirit? How many think it was a familiar spirit? How many think it was Samuel? Two. How many don't know? <laughs> Put up your hands if you don't know. Okay, I'll answer. Let's continue. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what did you see? And the woman said, I saw, listen, he asked her, What did you see? Don't be afraid. She has now discovered that she's talking to the king. What did you see? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw gods ascending out of the earth. She saw gods. Capital, small. Ascending out of what? From heaven or the earth? Where were they coming from? Down or up? Aha. Uh -huh. Next line. Next line. Verse, uh -huh. And said unto her, What form is he? The one you call Samuel. He's among the gods ascending from. And she said, I see an old man covered with a mantle now how would she know it is Samuel if he's covered with a mantle are you following what I'm saying how would she know that it is Samuel if he's covered with a mantle so was it Samuel If she can't see his face, how can she know it's Samuel? There was a familiar spirit in the image, in the, in the form, actually, in the form 
of Samuel. That when she saw this image, she would tell that if Samuel had a, a spiritual form, he would look something like this. But there is no evidence that she saw the face. He was covered in a what? In a mantle. And Saul perceived also that it was what? So who told Saul that anything that appears in the spirit with a mantle must be Samuel? There must have been some sort of wisdom existent in that time that was taught them as they were growing up and taught them to design like that. Okay, let me give you a simple example. I'm going, to come, I'm going to come back to this story. You remember the time when God sends Jonah to Nineveh? And the Bible tells us that Jonah instead refuses and takes a ship to what? Tashish. When he does, the Bible tells us a storm comes, a ra the, ra the sea starts raging. And the boat is about to what? To capsize. The scriptures tell us, these guys come and say, who has annoyed his God? Now, who told them that when, 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 when the seas turn against the boat, there must have been a man who has rebelled? It's forbidden. It's Hessian, but it's, they know. So they say, okay, let's cast lots. Who told them that a lot can find out who? Come on, help me. Who told them that a lot can discover who? And amazingly, the lot fell on Jonah. Was God in that lot? Do you think God was in that lot? Has everybody who disobeyed God died at sea? But there was a wisdom that knew that when a boat starts shaking, there must have been somebody who has turned against his God. General, his God. We don't know who. You understand what I'm saying? Now let's go back to the story here. So, she sees this man in a mantle. I hope you're following. I'm taking you somewhere. You don't have a clue, but don't worry. <laughs> Just flow with me. So like, where is this guy going? Where is this? Don't worry, we're going somewhere. Now, and he said unto her, what form is he? Right? So she defined a form. Right? Then he knew that it was what? Samuel. The Bible says he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And Samuel said to Saul, So was it Samuel or a familiar spirit? Thank you. So familiar spirit, but because he bowed to it, it became Samuel. Samuel said, the Bible says, to Saul, why have you disquieted me to bring me up? Now, again, let's follow. The Samuel speaking here was brought up, not from above. Huh? The Samuel speaking here was brought up. That means he was what? From hell or under. The one we're talking about was not called from heaven. He would have said, why did you bring me down? But the one speaking says, why did you bring me up? Because she saw God's coming from the earth there were many other spirits with different forms of other men but she could identify who samuel are we following do you still think it was samuel let's continue and why have you disquieted me and saul answered i'm so distressed for the philistines make war against me and god has departed from me and answered me no more neither by prophets nor by dreams therefore i have called thee that you may make known unto me what i shall do then samuel wherefore then then Samuel said, Wherefore did thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee and is become your enemy? Who is telling Saul that God is your enemy? Samuel? 
the spirit familiar or Samuel the real fellow? We're not talking about Samuel the real one. Let's continue. And the Lord has done him to him as he spoke by me. For the Lord has rent the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbor even to David. Because you obeyed not the voice of the Lord, nor executed his fierce wrath upon Amalek. Therefore the Lord has done this thing unto thee. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines. Listen. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. That means tomorrow you're going to what? Die. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the what? Of the Philistine. And Saul fell straight away. Told me tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. Where? <laughs> Heaven or hell? <laughs> Remember the guy speaking was brought up. Right? Now if I will skip with you. Uh, allow me to go straight to. To. To 31. First Samuel 31. Now we're going to the time when the Philistines now attack. Like Saul. Samuel sorry. Had spoken to Saul. Now the Philistines fought against Israel and then the men of Israel fled from before the Philistines and fell down slain on Mount Gilboa. The Philistines followed hard upon Saul and upon his sons. And the Philistines slew Jonathan, Abinadab, and Malachi, Shua, Saul's sons. And the battle went a Saul against who? Saul. And the archers hit him and he was so wounded of the archers. Right? But not dead. And said Saul unto his armor bearer, Draw your sword and thrust me through therewith. Lest these uncircumcised come and thrust me through and abuse me. But his armor bearer would not, for he was so afraid. Therefore Saul took a sword and fell upon it. When his armor bearer saw that Saul was dead, he fell likewise upon his sword and died with him. Now let's go back. When you go to what Samuel, the spirit familiar, told Saul, that tomorrow you and your sons will be with me, wouldn't it appear like Saul was to be killed by a Philistine? Answer me. First Samuel 31, was Saul killed by a Philistine? He killed himself. He committed suicide. Because he was wounded. Why would, why would all his kids die and he stays wounded? Why wouldn't God just slay this guy once? You're following what I'm saying? A familiar spirit spoke into the destiny of a man. And he took it word for word. That God had become his enemy. Because he did not slay the Amalek. In the same Bible, you have men who did worse. David killed a man, Uriah, and took over his wife. Who? Why wouldn't that guy be killed? Tell me why David wouldn't be killed. A prophet walks to David and tells him his mistake. David turns to the Lord. God is angry with his work. His work, sorry. But he turns to the Lord. God is angry with him, but he turns to the Lord. Who has understood what I just said? He didn't look for a familiar spirit. He didn't look for anything else to give an opinion. He still turns to the same God who is angry with him. He says, this man is a man after my own heart. When you study the Hebrew language there, it's a man with a heart like mine. That means he knows how I think, he knows who I am, he knows how I reason. Even if he has killed, he has still turned to me. He knows that my show sure masses are with him. He knows David turns to God. And in spite of all the judgments that go around David, God still preserves his life. Why? Because he knew God differently from how Saul knew God. Only reason. Ask your neighbor, what do you know about God? 
No, you just looked at me. Say it in Jesus' name. What do you know about God? You have a prostitute, Rahab. And she hides spies. The Bible doesn't tell us she left her prostitution. She just hid spies. And God said, in the lineage of Jesus, you'll be mentioned. Are you following what I'm saying? Because she believed in the way of the Lord. Simple. In the stories of Jesus, we see a woman caught in adultery. And by law, she's supposed to be killed. They bring her to Jesus. And say this woman has committed suicide and you know, I'm sorry, adultery. And you know that by our law, she's supposed to be what? Stoned to death. And this man goes down and writes and says, let him without sin cast the first stone. And then the Bible says, all of them, verses 9, walked away. They were convicted by their own conscience and went out one by one beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left and the woman standing in the midst. Now, when Jesus says, he without sin, let him cast the first stone. Had Jesus sinned? Huh? Had Jesus sinned? That means he had the right among anybody else to cast the stone. Verses 10. Verse, and then Jesus lift, had lifted up himself. He saw none but the woman. And he said to the woman, Where are your accusers? All of them with sin have gone away. I'm the one who is supposed to stone you because I'm the only one who doesn't know sin. Verses 11. The Bible says, And he said, She said, No, my Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee go and sin no more I have the right to kill you but I'm not going to kill you I have the right to stone you to death but I'm not going to stone you neither do I condemn you go and sin no more this is the heart of God this is the heart of God do you know how many people don't even come to church anymore because they have a wrong understanding of God? They just have a wrong opinion of God. The God they claim to know was misrepresented. Do you know how many people are not in the presence of God now? Not because they wouldn't, but somebody planted a seed in their spirit. That makes them fear God more than the fellow they drink with. They think that their drinking buddy is closer and more understanding than the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who shed his blood for their sins. A story is given of Samson. You know that wonderful fellow. Samson, one time, killed a thousand men with a jawbone of a what? An ass. One thousand. Wah, 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 wah. And they all what? Died. And the Bible says, in verses, Judges 15, verses 17, it came to pass when he had when he uh, no no verse 16 let's begin verse 16 judges 15 verse 16 and samson said with a jawbone of an ass hips upon hips with a jawbone of an ass have i slain a thousand men verse 17 it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called the place ramat lehi ramat lehi he called the name of the word of the place Ramat Lehi, the hill of the what? The jawbone. That's what it's called. Verses 18 Then he became thirsty after killing a thousand men with a jawbone of a word. He became what? Thirsty. And he called the Lord and said, Have you given me? 
this great deliverance and now I shall die for thirst and fall into the hand of the uncircumcised now I want you to remember the Philistines were chasing after Saul and Saul said I would rather kill myself than fall in the hand of an uncircumcised man from day old or ages past there was always a knowledge of a Jew when it came to fighting anybody who was uncircumcised anybody out of the covenant regardless of the status or circumstances that were surrounding the Jew you remember when David met Goliath yes. this is the word he said this guy is big he's, he's, he's the champion of God but this is the heart of God how can this uncircumcised Philistine defy the army of God? This had nothing to do with the credibility, the acuity, the, 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 the precision, the accuracy, the strength of David. David only regarded one thing. It was a covenant issue. I am under a covenant. This fellow is not under. Strong or not, wise or not, tall or not, big or not, skilled or not, armored or not armored, he cannot kill a man who is, under a, who is under another covenant. Are you following what I'm saying? So for David, it's an issue. He can't understand how a man who is not circumcised can kill a man which is circumcised. Regardless of what the circumcised man has done or not done. He's circumcised. Slap somebody. Are you following what I'm saying? David's issue here, he didn't say, how can this uncircumcised Philistine defy the right living army of God? This, in there were men which probably were not even right living. And I'm not saying that I support you living wrong. You know, some of you have some funny demons on you. You think I'm telling people to sin. I rebuke those demons in Jesus' name. That's why he told the woman, sin no more. I'm not promoting sin here. Come on, I can't be preaching Jesus on the same. I'm only trying to tell you here that David knew the principle of the covenant and he said, if this fellow is uncircumcised, it doesn't matter the state. If I am circumcised, he can't kill me. Saul gives him his armor. He says, no, I don't need your armor. I have a covenant. When he starts swinging his slingshot, he's not swinging his slingshot based on how many times he has practiced. He's swinging his slingshot knowing very well that this stone will find its place by reason of the covenant he has with God. He's circumcised. God is trying, to, the man after God's own heart, the man with God's own heart is trying to tell you, I know how God thinks. When it comes to me and the covenant I have with him, there are things we will sort with God, but he cannot let me in the hand of a Philistine to kill me. Saul didn't know that. Saul said, these Philistines are going to kill me. Why? Because he's moving under the prophecy of a familiar spirit. Slap somebody again. Do you understand what I'm saying? He says, how can I die? I, I cannot die in the hand of a Philist, an uncircumcised Philistine. He, he, he kills himself. Another man in the same breath said, no. If I am circumcised and a man is uncircumcised, I might be weaker. Listen, the man who killed himself had an army. This fellow standing before Goliath did not have an army. Are you following what I'm saying? The man who killed himself was fighting with weaker men. This guy standing before, before Goliath is standing before the champion of Gath. The guy they feared most. And they still can say, if I swing this thing, it must. He tells him, I will cut off your head, even without a sword. Because he knows it's a covenant issue. Tell your neighbor it's a covenant issue. It, it's not based on where you are. It's based on who you're with. It's not based on his, your performance. It's based on his faithfulness. The Bible says, even when we are not faithful. No, no, this is your Bible, not me. Don't get angry with me. Blame God. Even when we are not faithful, the Bible says, he still abides faithful. For he cannot deny himself. That's the Bible. Read it. If we believe not, yet he abides what? Even if you don't believe, for him he stays faithful. 
Because he can't deny himself. Even if you don't believe, he still says, I am faithful to what I said. The Bible says, my covenant will I not break, neither the thing I have spoken to my, from my mouth shall I alter. If I have said that you are more than a conqueror, you can walk out of it, but I'm not going to walk out of it. Somebody shout hallelujah. If I say that by my stripes you were healed, you can refuse to believe it, but I'm not going to change my faithfulness because you've refused it. David says no. This fellow is uncircumcised. Huh? How can I die under the hand of an uncircumcised? He walks to this fellow and tells him, I'm going to cut off your head, and he has no sword. But when you read the scriptures, when he swings this slingshot, hits the forehead of Goliath, the Bible says he uses the, 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 the sword of Goliath to what? To cut off the head of what? Because he knows being under a covenant and knowing that this fellow is uncircumcised. Every weapon he has brought, he, this fellow David has the potency to use it against him. Hey! Come on. Help me somebody. Am I talking to somebody? There is nothing the devil can put on you that you can't turn on him. There is nothing he can send to you that can't go back to him. There is nothing he can use against you that you can't use against him. It's not there. Tell you never, it's a covenant issue. This is what, this is a simple wisdom. This is the simple wisdom that Samson has. He says, let's go back. Verses 18. He was, Judges 15, 18. He was so athirst and called on the Lord and said, have you given this great deliverance into the hand of your servant? Now shall I die for thirst and fall in the hand of the uncircumcised. He, he didn't ask for water. He just asked a question. He didn't pray. He just asked a question that placed God on the integrity of his faithfulness. To see God go against his faithfulness. The integrity of his word. He just asked a question. He did pray. Let me. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Years ago, I was suffering from a very bad asthma, and a doctor prescribed an inhaler. They wrote the prescription. I was supposed to go and buy it. I toggled, I, I was boggled, I moved around this how how am i going to start in hell how 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 so i remember in prayer i go to god and <laughs> i'm saying god how how do i start in hell because my lungs were collapsing and god asked me a question he said what did the doctor say you're allergic to and i answered god cold air then God asked me, so you are allergic to what I created? You are allergic to what I created? How can you be everything I created, I said it was good? How can you be allergic to what I made good? Do you know, I was on my knees like this, when I heard that, I said, <laughs> I laughed at myself. I said, oh, oh, oh. Devil, you almost had me there. That was the last time I wished. <laughs> there was no prayer. <laughs> there was no what? Prayer. I just laughed. I said, oh, oh, oh. Devil, you almost had me there. I didn't pray. That was the last time I wished. That was the last time I ever felt any pain in my lungs. Because I just discovered this fellow was playing with me. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Are you learning something? Amen. How can I get such a deliverance from you? 
and then die thirsty and fall on the hand of a Philistine? He just asked a question. How? God intervenes. Let's go back to that reading again. God intervenes by his integrity. God didn't answer by saying, no, how can I allow you to die? No, no. God did what he knows makes sense. Let's go to verses 19. Judges 15, 19. I don't know why you removed it. And God cleft a hollow place that was in the jaw. And there came water there out. And when he had drunk, his spirit came again and he revived. Wherefore he called the name thereof Enhakore. Praise the Lord Jesus. En ha kore, meaning the spring of him who prayed. En ha kore means the spring of him who prayed. When did he pray? He just asked a question. And what was the question? He was questioning the integrity of God's word to break a covenant he had made with a man. Do you know somebody can ask a question tonight and heal with a question? Do you understand? This is your temple. How can it have sickness? And the answer comes with healing. Oh, no, no, no. Let me take it a notch higher. I am born of God. How can Northern Ireland fail when I'm here? Oh, 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 oh. look at you, look at you. Slap somebody, work that Irish up. Listen, are you following what I'm trying to tell you? God wants you to grow to a place where you can tell people revival is coming. And then they say, how? Because I'm here. <laughs> oh my God. Because I am in Northern Ireland. Hello? No, no. Ask the people back home. Ask the people back home. There are things that would happen and I tell them, no, war can't happen. I say, why? Because I am in Uganda. Oh, the economy, the economy can't fail. Why? Because he will not let his righteous see corruption nor his soul rot in hell. Now that is regardless of the circumstances surrounding me. I am holding God on the integrity of his word. Shake somebody. Don't be scared of them. Nobody's going to slap you back. Are you following what I'm trying to tell you? Do you know there is somebody who thinks... That God created you just to kill you. Yeah, yeah, there are people who think like that. God, God just created you. Somebody quoted that portion of scripture that says there was a man who was, you know, born what? And then Jesus says that, <laughs> that, that it was for, what? for the glory of God that this man was what? Eh? The, yeah, uh, born blind. Do you remember that portion of scripture? John chapter 9. Now, do you know how many people misread that portion of scripture until I read it from the Hebrew text? He didn't say that this man was born like this so that the glory of God should be what? No, rather, it, it says something like, and, G, and the disciples asked him saying master who did this who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind next verse uh-huh and jesus answered neither has this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of god should be made manifest in him when you read the hebrew the, the, the greek it sounds like and jesus answered neither has this man sinned nor his parents comma but the works of God should be made manifest in him. 
who has understood it? They put a full call on where there was supposed to be a coma. Neither this man nor his parents sin, coma, but the works of God should be made manifest in him. Meaning, God then create blind people. But the works of God should not may, not could, not might. It should be made manifest. In my country, we have a child. This child was born with cerebral palsy. The George. And two holes in the heart. Same child. And they told the mother, for this child to live for a few, a few weeks, a few months, you need to take them for an operation. And this child was, I don't know, four or something, but she couldn't walk. She brought that child to me. I hugged this child and I prayed and I said, God, every circumstance on this child is reversed. There's a video on that. I can play for you, for you tomorrow. Put the child to the mother back. One day she's out cleaning. She just sees her child walking. The child whom the doctor said she will never walk, never talk, never do anything. She took the child to the same doctors they couldn't find any holes in the heart. Cerebral palsy had been reversed. De George had been reversed. And she has a normal child. That the works of God should, you know more English than I, you're English. Me, I'm not. Should be made manifest. That means there's an indelible command for God to show himself strong. So I realized this. Now I'm bringing this to a close. I've spoken for exactly one hour. We misunderstood God. We misunderstood his mercy. We misunderstood his grace. We misunderstood his heart. That's why many are disconnected from God. Some of us are sickly and we think we're going to die of sickness because we misunderstood who God is. There's a person who can't believe God for healing because they misunderstand who God is. Not because your issue is big, but because you misunderstood who God was. There's a person struggling right now in your workplace, and you're not going to come out of that drama because you don't know who God is. Oh, I have a demon spirit. I can't get married. You don't know who God is. The Bible says, none shall lack hamet. You know what it means. God, now, let's just say they've done all the witchcraft on your life, but he has said, none shall lack hamet. Who told you? that your uncles, aunties, cousins, brothers, witchcraft can come against the integrity of God's word. Read, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read, no one of these shall fail, none shall want her met. That means no woman shall want her husband and it won't be present. Woolulu. Oh, sorry, that's Ugandan. <laughs> it's a colloquial <laughs> thing, meaning wow. Are you following somebody? When I read these things, I know I can't fail. I, I know I can't fail. How can I fail? Even asking the question is a prayer. <laughs> hey! Even asking the question is a prayer. How can I fail? How can I be weak? How can I be sick? How? Are you following what I'm saying? How, how can you fail? Tell me. How, how can you be weak? Oh no, Apostle, you don't, you don't understand. No, no, you don't understand. No, you don't know what I'm going through. No, no, no. You don't know who God is. There is nothing he can't do. Nothing he can't do. Even for you who says, ah, no, you know, I've done so much. That, there's nothing you could do that God can't forgive you for. But instead of coming back and falling back to God, you're falling back to familiar spirits. I told people, it doesn't matter how many mistakes you make in life. Come back to the presence. And tell God, I have my issues, but I'm here. I have a drinking issue, but I'm here. I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm a cheater, but I'm here. Deal with me, I'm here. Because I know 
that are smoldering weak you shall not what you shall not burn out if somebody is trying to get right you can't slay them you'll fan them into flame that's just the way of God some of you left church long ago because you think oh no God with things I've done God can't forgive me no the bad and the good come regardless I don't know who I'm talking to but there's somebody who even entering the church you're like me filthy come as you are if you fall at least fall forward that's one way to fall fall forward yeah mess up and come back and tell God I'm still here I'm your boy you understand me you can't shut me out I cannot fail in this life because I trust the faithfulness of God this thing I'm telling you is so powerful you can trust his faithfulness in Africa we have a song many of you don't know it but I'll sing it for you one guy sang he said which key are you on Which key are you on? You are who you are Yesterday Listen Today and forevermore What you say Is what you do You never fail You never change You're faithful to the end Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. Yeah. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. Proven yourself in my life, and I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. Then he sings, You're too faithful to leave me, my Jesus. You're too faithful to leave me halfway. What you start, you always finish. And I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail. I know that your kidneys are failing, but your God has not failed. Your liver might be failing, your heart might be failing, but your God has not failed. The systems of Northern Ireland might be failing, but God has not failed Northern Ireland. The church might be going through its turbulences and things might not be turning as they ought to, but God has not failed the church. He's still faith. He's waiting for a man who can hold him to his promise and say, God, I believe you. Somebody say, God, I believe you. Now I want to pray with you. Oh, but I've missed up. The Bible says he's able to save all that come to him, to the uttermost. All that come to him. Now, forget everything you've done or not done. Just hold him to his word and say, God, you said you are able to serve to the uttermost. Those that come to you through faith. I'm coming to you through faith. I'm not looking at what I did, what I didn't do, whether I'm right or wrong. I'm looking at your faithfulness. I'm not banking on how good I am or how faithful I am. I'm banking on you being my father. Because 
if you feel sad when your child is sick do you want to tell me you love your child more than God loves you no our churches are drying up because God has been misrepresented I thank, I thank God for what was put on the flyer Jesus is your savior he is not your accuser Raise your hands and thank God for tonight's word.